Welcome to Kelly FC TV. Today we have uh, another Kilmarnock legend, Mr. Paul Clark. Paul signed for Kilmarnock in 1973 for Walter yes, McRae. Yeah, schoolboy form. He played 436 appearances, scored 31 goals, 25 league goals. Just tell me he scored the first ever Premier League goal for Kilmarnock against Motherwell. That's correct, aye. And made his debut against Thistle in a 3 1 win. And his last game was in 1986 against Air United when they were pleasantly relegated. I'd like to say it was a 3 1 win against Thistle, but we get beat. We, Sorry. We, we, we get beat quite a lot against them. Paul also played for the Scottish League Select against Italy B and League of Ireland. Paul, your footballing began in. How did it all start for you? Well, basically, like everybody else back then, I come from a, a footballing family. Uh, my dad liked football, I had an uncle that played senior. Uh, Started off just the schools. I mean, the schools were the big thing in the days, and played with the, my, my local school, St Mary's Primary School. Went to St Michael's Academy in Colwyn and, and played there. Uh, basically, played in good school teams. I, I was fortunate enough to play with good players and win lots of games. Uh, Jimmy McIntosh was the groundsman at Colwyn and uh, St Michael's in Colwyn. He saw me, he was a scout for Kilmarnock and he recommended me to the club. So basically uh, that's that's where I, I signed for Kilmarnock. Uh, I think I was 14, 15 year old and after that I was just always with Kilmarnock uh, until I retired at 29. So it was a, it was a good start and had obviously had a good career. Your debut against Partick Thistle resulted in a 3-1 defeat. Do you remember that and did the manager tell you before the game that you were playing or was it just a Turn up and by the way it, you're playing. It was always just a turn up and you're playing basically in the days. There was never any sort of warning. You knew if you were in the, the, the squad of players you had a chance of playing. Uh, it was Wally Fern who was the manager at the time and obviously he had a, a big belief in me so he, he put me into the team and uh, it was it was really I don't remember much about the game to be honest with you. Uh, I just remember we got beat and it was a it was a bad feeling but uh, it happened quite a lot, so you, <laughs> you get used to it over the years. <laughs> you missed a few games after that before becoming a stalwart, and it was mainly a mainstay of McLean, Robertson, McDickon and Clark. Was that uh, a chemistry that happened there right away because you played for so long together, or did it just... It, it kind of came together, no, not by default, but basically I, mean, I played, when I first went into the team, it was because Brian Rodman uh, was, was the centre half at the time. And what happened was that Brian Rodman went into dispute with the club because we'd gone part time and everybody was getting the same wages. Uh, and I think Brian was looking at it and saying, well, I'm, I'm actually was on the bench against England on, in the summer. And then the next thing, you know, I'm, I'm sort of getting the same money as guys like Paul Clark, who's just, you know, just a 17 year old as he's turned up. So I think he felt it was unfair. But the, the club policy at that time was everybody was getting the same money. Uh, he was in dispute, so I played uh, that game. The game, actually, I, I, I get ill. Uh, it, was, it was quite strange, actually, because I played in all the League Cup games, uh, and then I played the first League game, and then I actually get hepatitis, and I missed six games in a row. And I was, it's just the way football works. I was really fortunate, because I remember coming back to the training. I trained one night, and I played on the Saturday, and I didn't think I was fit. No way was I fit after that, but there was a kind of injury crisis on at the time, so I just got put straight back into the team and I kind of stayed there. there after. You must have played all right then, because you... I, I must have. <laughs> <laughs> you were never out after, after that, that were you? Uh, well, suspension and injury, but quite a lot of suspensions. <laughs> <laughs> you won promotion in your first full season. That yeah. must have been really pleasing, you said, this is great, senior football. Well, like I, like I say, I had I had been I had been actually in good school teams, and I had uh, I'd went junior, we went Rovers, I'd also went Rovers for a season, and they had a reasonably good team. I was actually quite uh, it's a strange thing to say, but I was quite used to success, you know, winning winning games, right. and I just took it in my stride as you do. You're only young, you're playing games every week, and if you're winning, great, you know, it's, it's confidence. Yeah, it does definitely. Being part time, when you stepped up into the Premier League. Did you find a massive difference because you were part time against full time players? Again, at the time, you didn't you didn't really think that. If you look at the whole season, yeah, you could compete against teams in a, a one off game. You know, you could play against anybody and, and be good. But over over the length of a season, it becomes more difficult. There's 
obviously we don't have as big a squad, we're, we're not quite as fit because we are part time and I ultimately it does it does tell. It was just it was an unfortunate season. Uh, in hindsight if if Wally Fernie had really good players and it was a, probably the best commander team I've played in, but we, we, Coaching was not a big thing in the days, right. particularly with Willie Fernie, he was just like, <laughs> there's the ball, go and play. <laughs> you know. Right. Do you think that was a major learning curve that first year in the Premier League for yourself? Because you were still relatively young then. It was, well, you, you, always, you always think, you know, you, can, you, can you play at that level? And, you know, as I was playing against uh, <coughs> really good players, you know, and uh, you know, you're playing against folk like Gay Leash and Derek Johnson, and, you know, you were playing against top, top players. And I found that I was able to to play at that level, and that's a big that's a big thing in confidence. And that even though you were part time, you could still compete against them. But like I say, over the, the period of a full season, it, it kind of grinds you down and it becomes quite difficult. The second time you get promoted, did you find it easier to step up the second time because the the first season under Davis Ned and the team stayed in the Premier League? Yeah, I I think I think at that time. David Davis Sneddon was more tactically astute as regards, you know, how to how to play the game and you know, he, he, David knew a player, he could bring in players and did we did really, really well. Don't get me wrong, it, it was in hindsight it was a wee bit of a miracle because we had a really good team and we, we played really well that season. Get the wee Robbie the Green at the right time, a wee bit of luck when you when you need it and we stayed up. It was difficult, you know, it's it was difficult and it, it actually I showed you the next season when we couldn't quite reach that level, then it was, it was another bad season. It was a bad season. Yeah. Coming to that next season, we were unfortunately relegated again. How big a loss was Big Alan that season when he, Alan McCulloch got injured? It, it was a big season. I mean, Kilmarnock has always been blessed with good goals. You know, when you can go for, like I said, uh, I played with Ali Hunter in the reserves. You know, just before he gets moved to Celtic, he was a he was a top goalie internationalist, and then you had Jim Stewart again, an internationalist, Alan McCulloch, who arguably should have been an internationalist. So you, we always had good goalies, and goalies are a big bit of the team. Uh, you know, and Alan McCulloch getting injured at that time when actually we were struggling, and I think actually Alan got injured against Morton. I'm pretty sure and I wasn't playing. I was injured as well at that time, right. so I'm not saying that I was the I was the, the main reason, but I was part of the reason. At that time, we were getting a few injuries at the wrong time of the season. It's just the Robbie the Green again. It's the season going for you. And a small squad yeah. without other players to come in, yeah. maybe yeah. the same standard as yeah. yourself for Al. That's right. Yeah. You played under four Kelly managers, although Walter signed you. Yeah. Different managers. Who was the best? Who was the worst? Who did you most enjoy playing under? I enjoyed playing under Wally Fernie. Uh, I think I've said that, but that was because we had good players, and I was new, I was young, and I was fresh and enthusiastic. And you know, he was good because we just go and play. You know, and I was that was the way I kind of played all through my my sort of my teens, if you like, when I was playing with the schools, or playing with the Winton Rollers. Or, you know, it was just it was a, it was quite simple. David Sneddon was the best manager overall. David was a guy who knew a player, knew the game better, and actually was quite quite a kind of modern manager for his time because you could players would fall out with David. You know, there'd be there'd be disagreements with David, but he was never one to hold a grudge, and he was always good for that point of view. Where you know you could have a disagreement with him, but the next week you'll still be playing and that. Whereas other managers, I'll move on to Jim Clooney. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jim, Jim was different, you know, him and I got off to the wrong foot because he, he dropped me, I just, I, he, he just turned up uh, and I didn't get into the team, you know, and I missed, I missed three or four months of the, the season. Gradually I got back into the team uh, and ended up, you know, we were, we were fine, but Jim kind of tried to rule by fear, you know, he had that kind of attitude to, to the footballing world is, uh, you'll do as I say, kind of style, you know, so, and it was, it was difficult because once you start the fear factor goes, then the respect goes and eventually, you know, Jim left. Right. Uh, Eddie Morrison, what can you say about Eddie, he was a great guy, smashing guy, good football player, played, played in the team when Eddie was playing, it was really great playing with Eddie, he was a really nice guy, came to the club, club was on a downhill spiral, scope, uh, spiral. Uh, and he didn't have a chance really, 
you know, and, and, and to be fair to him, you know, I mean, he did, he made the best of what he had because the season that I left, we were actually just missed promotion to the, the Premier League again by one point, so, you know, and, and that was a poor team. Right. Played for Kuma a lot of years. My personal memory, I've said to you, so off camera, was a goal against Clyde Bank where you did a, a Maradona, if you want, for the half the line. <laughs> and after yeah. losing a goal in the 89th minute, equalising, yeah. you remember that well? Oh, I remember it well. It was, it was quite funny. It was one of the situations where Clyde Bank were on there particularly nice team to play against. They were quite niggly, they were kind of like party thistle in a lot of ways where they were just, you know, they just did they play the game the way you, they would like to play the game. Uh, they scored a goal and I went up actually and I, I think it was Sammy McGovern through the centre and I said to him, I said, well I'm going up for a kick. And I actually think I said it to Stuart McLean, I said I'm going up for a kick at one of their them. And he gave me the ball, and it just it just worked. Out. It was uh, the two centre forwards. I, I just kind of ran through them. He didn't make a tackle. I went to, through the midfield. There was there was nobody there, and then I kind of shimmied. I think the, the centre half who went the wrong way. And before I knew it, the goalie was there, and he came out and fell down, and I just chipped it over. It was, I mean, it was actually a really really good goal when you think about it. But it, everything just fell right, you shall we say? <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting booked for the celebration as well. <laughs> Your last game was against the United. Any memories from that game? Because you obviously knew that was going to be your last game because you were going on to new pastures. Uh, well, at the time, I, I wasn't sure if it was my last game, and you know, I, I didn't, I didn't treat it as my last game. I knew I'd applied to join the police, uh, or I was going to join the police, and I think I had started the, the sort of process, but I was still hopeful, and it was quite a strange thing because I remember saying to Eddie Morrison, you know, can you know? try and do something for me, you know, if they had turned around and said we'll give you X amount of money or there's a testimonial for you because I'd been there, you know, yeah. over 10 years and I'm thinking, oh, no, got a testimonial or something like that. And it was like, no, we don't do testimonial. So, so I, in hindsight, it was my last game. It was a pretty nothing game apart from the fact it was beating near United, which is always good, but they had been relegated. We, we were not getting promoted, so it was it was a nothing game, but aye, it, was, it was a good game to get out. Right. What was your highlight game, your best game for your time at Kumar? Anything that sticks out? Or too There's many? A lot of games. I, I love scoring, I, I always remember, I love scoring against Celtic at Parkhead. Uh, and we, we sort of held on to the last 10 minutes with the beaters 2-1. Uh, I remember, that, that, was a, that was a good memory. The, the promotion games were good, you know, the, the ones that you really had something to play for. Uh, but I loved playing against the old firm as well because it was, it was a challenge, you know, it was a, a real challenge and, you know, some players think you can't play against the, the old firm because they're difficult games, but I always thrived in them, I loved, I loved the atmosphere and, you know, that, that so was... Get you up for yeah, it. yeah, very much Bigger so. crowd. Yeah, yeah. Let's show them that we're here for yeah. a game. But we're always a big underdogs. Right. So during your time at Kelly, who was the best player you played with at Comano? Oh, that's... I think I said to you earlier off camera, <laughs> that's a really hard, hard question. You know, I mean, there was so many good players that I played with. Uh, nobody was, you know, obviously there were no superstars, but there was a lot of good players. You've got, you've got to go for the, the defence that I played with. You know, I mean, you've got Stuart McLean, very underrated, uh, sorry, underrated player, who wasn't really appreciated by a lot of the Commander fans because he was a football playing right back, but he was a good football player. Uh, Big Derek, obviously, Derek would run through a brick wall, and but he could score, he could score goals, vital games, uh, he could handle himself as everybody knows. Alan Robertson played, just Alan was just Mr Steady, just played all the time. He had Jimmy Clark, who was a great player, uh, just in the midfield, buzzing about, always willing to take a pass, you know, he was, he was never ever hiding, which is a great thing to have in a team. And then you got front. You know, you get players like Eddie Morrison that you know right. was great for scoring goals. John Buck, who's a really nice guy, uh, great great football player. If he had just had a wee bit more belief, John, I think John would have been a top top notch player. Right. And your hardest opponent? Getting difficult. Uh, it depends. I mean, played against some really good players. I played against Kendall Wish, who is a great player, obviously. Uh, you had Paul Rossi that I played for again in the Italian, the Italian league, who was lightning quick, obviously had a fantastic career. The players I found difficult to play against were probably the, the hard centre forwards that were always, you know, niggling you, you know, being physical with you. 
they were, they were real challenges. You'd folk like Dougie Somner at St Murn, uh, Joe Craig when he, he went to Celtic, uh, players like that. Even we, Joe Harper at Aberdeen, you know, had the wee player. You know. And finally, Paul, a message for Kilmarnock fans. A message for Kilmarnock fans? <laughs> Long may it continue as it's going just now, I've got to say. <laughs> uh, new manager's come in, he's done a fantastic job. The players have obviously bought into whatever he's telling them to do and hopefully it's, it's going to continue. I mean, it's, uh, it's been a fantastic start, but it is just a start. There's a long way to go. club has been in its knees for a long, long time. Uh, I've got to say, Bill Bowie's seems to be doing a fantastic job as well. And uh, if we keep going the way we're going, we'll, we'll certainly be up there again. And this is the last question. <laughs> in a previous interview, you said that you taught your brothers everything they know. Yeah. Is that still the case? And are you still the keep up in the Clark House? Well, road? it may have been a bit tongue in cheek, you know, and uh, I think Stephen's going to thump the my ground now, you know. I thought I was a Kelly legend, and now all of a sudden he's turned up, so it's, I'm not happy about that in that sense. Keep you up, my boy Peter claims to be the keep you up. Uh, I, I think I was in the, the 500s or something like that. And he told me that he actually got over a thousand one time when I was playing a game when I was in over 35 league many, many years ago. He was walking around the park, keeping it up, and he says, you saw me? I said, no, I was playing the game, so I don't, I don't know. Uh, so I'm still claiming it. Paul, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks right. very much. Thank you.